Now, a video clip of an unvaccinated doctor challenging the health secretary over government plans to make the COVID jab mandatory for all NHS staff very soon now has gone viral. Dr Steve James is a consultant anaesthetist at King's College Hospital in London and he's been working in the ICU there since early 2020, the beginning of the pandemic. And on a visit by the health secretary, he told Sajid Javid the science isn't strong enough to support the policy of mandatory vaccination for NHS staff. Let's hear what he had to say. You're not happy about it, tell me. Yeah. So, I've had COVID at some point. Yeah. Uh, I've got antibodies. Yeah. Um, I've been working on COVID ITU since the beginning. Yeah. I have not had a vaccination. I do not want to have a vaccination. And for that, I would be dismissed if I don't have a vaccine. It's not, the science isn't strong enough. Well, Dr. Steve James is joining us live now from, from his home. Uh, as Susanna said, that thing went viral. So many millions of people have seen it. And basically, Dr. Jones, that's made you the poster doc for the whole anti-vax movement. But that's not, that's not a kind of hat that you want to wear. And you've come on Good Morning Britain to try and put the record straight. So where exactly do you stand on vaccination? Firstly, thank you very, very much for giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, if I'm the voice of anything, I'm the voice of uh, 100,000 NHS uh, staff who uh, already aye. lost their jobs. People whose voice hasn't been heard. OK, but can you, can you do what I think you're here to do, which is to explain why you're not anti-vax? Well, to be anti... Well, I'm not anti-vax because I've seen a great, great benefit from vaccines. Um, there's been a huge reduction in the number of uh, seriously ill patients who've come into hospital and vaccination has probably made, or it's almost certainly made the largest contribution to that. So why did, so you, say, me, so why did you say that to, to Javid? So the difference between me giving my own personal opinion about why I wouldn't have a vaccine and whether vaccines in general are good. So, you know, as a doctor, I'm not anti-surgery. It doesn't mean that surgery is what I need to have. So for a population, it'd be good to offer certain treatments. Doesn't mean that everybody needs to have those treatments. So why haven't you been vaccinated? Personally, I'm uh, a fit and well uh, man. I'm, I'm not elderly. Um, I was ex exposed to COVID on multiple occasions uh, in hospital settings um, and I wasn't getting sick. And I thought, well, the vaccines are out there now. They'll go to the elderly and the vulnerable and I was surprised to see that there wasn't a point where uh, instead of saying, OK, instead of everything offering to everyone, we're now going to start offering it to people in a more nuanced way. But being fit and young and well is no defence against COVID. Young, fit people have died from it. I haven't seen anyone who's young and fit and well and has died of COVID. Now, there are always going to be exceptions, um, but pe young, fit and healthy people also die of other things. Um, so I thought I would just sit and wait and see, sit and wait. Um, um, you know, yesterday, the, the director of the CDC announced that uh, more than 75% of deaths in the US have been in people with four or more comorbidities. So out of that 25%, a lot of them have got three, have got two, have got one. I still haven't seen anybody who's, who's died in my hospital, not say it hasn't happened, but who hasn't got any comorbidities or any issues. Uh, just to be clear, you are speaking entirely in a personal capacity and not uh, as a representative uh, for the hospital. Um, you won't get vaccinated and you've explained why you believe you don't need to. Uh, just want to establish, have you... You say you've been exposed to COVID. Have you actually had COVID? Um, I haven't had a symptomatic episode that I know to be COVID, so I had one fever in the last two years. It lasted... It came on in an evening... Uh, when I did the ne next tests, uh, I was negative. So I don't know if I've had it symptomatically, but I've got antibodies that show that I've had it. How do you know that? Uh, how do, do you get an antibody test offered to you at, uh, in your work? No, it's not offered to me in work, but I've had one done. You've had one, was... sorry? You've had one? He's had an antibody I've test done, one. and that would be privately, presumably, would it? Well, I asked uh, the hospital if it's possible to get one done, and I got one done then. And just to clarify then, if you, if anybody is carrying antibodies to COVID, are you saying that that automatically means that they must have been infected with it at some point? Yeah, if you're carrying antibodies to a virus, you've developed an immune system's memory 
because you, you develop that memory because you've been exposed to it before. Okay, so that's it's the kind of Novak Djokovic defence against mm. um, vaccination, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, uh, Dr James, um, you are not going to get uh, vaccinated. You, you've said that. You've had that argument with the health secretary. Of course, that comes with a penalty within the NHS because from April, if you aren't vaccinated, you'll lose your job. Are you prepared yeah. to simply lose your work for the sake of taking a vaccination, which we know, and you have explained, is enormously beneficial? So the, the benefit is, an, it, it is for people who are likely to have a serious consequence. So the benefit isn't there for me. I'm, for me, it's a point of principle that 100,000 members of my profession who have made careful and valued assessments for themselves in, in the majority of cases, that they are not being forced to have a vaccine, to have a medical intervention, which up until current epidemic was outlawed in public health acts, that even in crisis, health crises, these things weren't going to be allowed. And now the government's changed its mind and said that we think it's there. But the government reports from the, the House of Commons, uh, from select committees, from the House of Lords, they say the scientific evidence isn't strong enough. Well, are you, are you arguing this purely from, a, if you like, a civil rights uh, point of view? Or are you also suggesting, as I think you might have done in, in that exchange with, with Javid, uh, that you don't trust the vaccine all the way? You don't think it's been researched fully enough? Am, am I right to summarise it that way? Sorry, I, I lost a little bit. You were saying, am I arguing it purely from a civil rights point of view? Well, I, OK, I'll re repeat the question. Are you, are you arguing this, as I say, from a human rights, civil rights point of view, uh, personal freedom, or do you also have your suspicions that the vaccine isn't 100% trustworthy? So, my concern is the civil liberties side. Uh, I think the vaccines proved to be very safe, however, very safe over the period of time we've looked at it, so I'd like to look at it for a longer period of time. But as my mum said to me last night, she said, you know, if, if King's is going to lose 1,400 members of staff, then how's the NHS going to survive? And you've yeah, got to look I, at the practicality. Okay. Dr James, oh. what I don't understand is you're prepared <coughs> to uh, lose your job and, mm -hmm. and put your uh, department under pressure mm -hmm. as a result of you losing a job, mm -hmm. because I don't know, you know, how... <laughs> how easy it can be to get an anaesthetist with your sort of training and qualifications in there. Despite the fact you believe the vaccine is safe and effective. I d I, I'm not sure I understand it. Anyway, let's talk to Dr Hillary about it, um, because uh, Dr James says he doesn't want to be a poster boy for the anti-vax yeah. movement. I can't see how uh, he, he avoids that, frankly. Yeah, look, I'm not going to get anything like equal time to refute what uh, Stephen James has said. The basic uh, point that I'd like to make is the vast majority of doctors and scientists think the science is plenty strong enough to support vaccination and mandatory vaccination for NHS staff in contact with patients. By his own admission, he's got antibodies. So at some point, he's been in contact with coronavirus and has been capable of transmitting coronavirus to the sickest patients in society in intensive and critical care. That's the first point. Having not been vaccinated, he is likely to have a higher viral load when he's been infectious and to carry that virus for longer. And all the science shows that transmission in an unvaccinated person is likely to carry on for longer uh, than it would in a vaccinated person. So he talks about the risk to himself. There is an ethical duty for doctors under the GMC regulations in communicable diseases to immunise yourself to protect the risk to your patients. And clearly that isn't happening here. And you have uh, the extra consequence that it, because of his refusal, and we understand, I think, one in ten NHS staff currently not vaccinated. Yep. Losing that number of staff and, and, and some is of them massive. Absolutely. At a time of yeah. huge pressure on the yeah, NHS. I understand that, and 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 a lot of uh, doctors and scientists are infuriated that that because a lot of them were hesitant facing this deadline that's fast approaching. That this will have done a lot of damage. That this will have dissuaded them from right. actually yeah. overcoming that hesitancy and coming forward and being vaccinated. Well, we have to go back then for the right of reply to that telling off to Dr. James. That that was an effect of telling off from from one of your fellow professional doctors. He says that. You're basically your behaviour is, uh, if you like, selfish. Uh, what you're doing is for your own interests and good and, and to support your political views in terms of, of human rights and civil rights, but you're putting patients at risk. You've, you've actually put patients at risk. 
10% of the NHS staff are essentially in the same position as me. I'm, I'm not a fringe person. I'm having an expression of my voice, a voice which hasn't been heard. I've got thousands and thousands of positive comments from people. Hundreds of doctors and nurses have contacted me saying, thank you, let's open this debate up. The debate has not been held. Mm -hmm. Many uh, groups of doctors, of other politicians have said, the science isn't strong enough. And you know, if we don't have a debate, if it's a single story, if it's a single narrative, that's not science. Well, science is questioning things. Absolutely, and your voice has been heard. It's been heard here, and that's our job. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much Thank indeed you. for coming on. Thank you, Hillary, for putting the other point of view.